Hi, everybody. Good evening. I am Lisa Mislevy. I'm an integrative registered dietitian, and um, I have been joining up with Alternative Healthcare Center recently, but I've been with them for the last 20 plus years um, as an employee, as um, a student learning the craft, and um, recently as a dietitian. So um, Dr. Jantz was supposed to get on and speak first about weight loss. However, uh, we're having technical difficulties and he's trying to work on that fervently at his end. So he may pop in at any point. Um, we, I will keep my eye open for him. So sorry to keep you waiting these few minutes. I was trying to see if there was something I could do um, to help him out. So um, I'm just answering him right now, telling him I'm going to keep an eye out for him. All right. So tonight you are here to hear me talk again about weight loss. I think it comes up in every talk, but tonight is dedicated just for weight loss because that is like the number one problem and the number one question. And um, as much as everyone talks about it, it still seems like everybody has questions because it's not easy, right? If it was easy, um, everyone would be, you know, easy uh, or like figuring out how to do it, right? Thanks, Kathy, for understanding. Yes, glitches are part of life. <laughs> so we have to roll with that. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's, you know, some, you know what, let me do my presentation. Here I am already talking. I'm not even doing my presentation. So I have this and I'm going to um, go through each slide with you. I am going to give you the nuts and bolts of weight loss. Of course, there's way more to it that I can't say in 30 minutes, but I'm going to get right to the point. And then, um, as usual, there's always handouts, right? So I have these handouts that um, are going to be in the comment section at the end of this talk. And then you can sign up to get them for free. And if you don't make it, then you can, uh, like tonight, to sign up for them, you can just get them at uh, Dr. Jantz's office at Alternative Healthcare Center and grab them there. Okay. Not another weight loss presentation. That is the title of this. So, oops, let me click on the right thing here to get going. Okay, um, so tonight what I'm going to talk about are the most important factors for weight loss. Now, these are all giant topics within themselves, but I'm going to kind of go through the top seven. These are all, like if you did any one of these, um, they would be helpful. Alone, they may not get you rolling with weight loss. Um, number one and two are definitely huge in here. But I mean, now that I look at them, they're all huge. <laughs> so uh, I fight with myself about this all the time. But um, let's go through them, okay? So first, let's just start with a big, uh, who wants to talk about losing weight? I'm assuming you're here because you want to lose some weight. And it's frustrating. We're all like, mm, can we just do this? Um, so, you know, I say that and uh, at the same time, we have to, right? Like there's nothing else we can do but persevere. So on ahead, okay? We got our winding out of the way. Now let's put our smiles back on and move forward, okay? So weight loss. Um, I've, I wanted to say this part first. A lot of people want to blame genetics. And yes, there is a component in there, um, but then there's also kind of not, you know? Um, so yes, there's something that we can look towards for maybe why we might tend to carry more weight, but at the same time, there's a lot we can do. So that's what I want to say real quick here is that um, there are things we can't control, right? Um, our genes, you can't, you can't do anything about that, all right? You have your genes, that's it. Um, your parents' health at the time of your uh, conception. So when you were gestating in your mom, you can't control the environment. Maybe they were smoking. Maybe they were eating bad. Maybe they were under crazy stress. You know, who knows? But uh, you can't control that. And you can't control the environment uh, that you were raised in as a child. Your entire childhood was not really in your control. So all these things create the you you are now, and they're not in your control. The things that you can control. Now, epigenetics is a newer field, and by newer, it's like, I don't know, almost 20 years old, um, and it's complicated, but just roughly speaking, you have your genes, right? Like this for me is like DNA, and DNA is controlled, the way that it expresses itself is controlled by many, many factors, right? It's not just always chugging along doing its thing. Um, the outside environment of your DNA affects how it expresses itself. So that's what epigenetics is. 
So those are the things that you can control. You can help how your genes express themselves. That would be through diet. That would be through lifestyle. And what's your toxin exposure? Um, again, before you were, you know, like when you were in uterus or when you were a child, uh, you know, maybe you were exposed to toxins. Maybe uh, you had a bunch of dental fillings. So um, we have to let go of the things that we can't control, right? Everybody knows Elsa from Frozen and we got to let that go. We don't want that um, to stress us out and, you know, give us an excuse to just be the not ideal version you have of yourself. Um, so we want to move forward. Okay. So what can we control? Let's talk about that. So number one on here was food quality. Okay. The quality of what you eat really is huge with weight loss. This sounds simple, but it is, it is giant. Okay. You can, you know, in the old, like I want to say in the olden times, that's what my kids always say about like, you know, people my age. Uh, and so it, it hurts, but um, you know, like in the eighties and nineties, it was all about calories. So you could eat like, you know, four slices of pizza and a cup of ice cream in your day. And as long as you were in your calories, you were supposed to lose weight, but the quality of that food is not good. And, and that tells your body how to function and whether to gain weight or lose weight is part of that information the food provides. So um, food quality is huge. It's information to how your genes express themselves. And ideally, we want to eat food that is the highest quality, which doesn't have to be expensive, but um, it should look like where it came from. Okay, so plants should be on your list of foods that you eat, and they should look like where they came from. You shouldn't buy a powdered bag of potato that turns into mashed potatoes. There's lots of ingredients in that and chemicals and weird things. You should just start with a potato, right? Right. Um, so that's what I mean by um, the food quality. It, it, and it's, it's a huge topic, but just to kind of, you know, go through it here, um, we want foods to basically look like their natural state. For animal products, um, meats should look like the fresh cut of meat that they um, came from as opposed to, uh, you know, sausages and lunch meat. Not that there isn't a place for those to sneak in sometimes, but we're just talking ideals here, okay? Um, so examples. Um, you want to get animal products that um, where the animals are eating the their original diet, meaning, um, you know, cows aren't supposed to eat cow feed, whatever that's made of. Um, cows are supposed to graze on grass. And that completely changes the quality of their meat, of their fat composition, um, like omega-3 versus omega-6 fat composition. Literally, uh, there's tons of research backing that up. Um, and all of their dairy products are going to be much different quality. Um, e uh, eggs, uh, chickens, when they are eating what they're supposed to, which is basically everything, um, instead of being in these little cages where they raise them on, on um, commercial, um, whatever they are, farms, um, you know, their, their eggs are amazing. Their yolks are full of nutrition. You can see the color change, the consistency and everything. So those are really important things is what I'm trying to say. Uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, those are all whole foods. That's high food quality. And minimally processed foods. Okay, this is obvious, but I'm just throwing it out there because we all still eat processed foods. I'm just saying, can we um, set aside the ones that we know are probably doing damage and we really don't need them in the pantry or the freezer or the fridge um, and, and just lean towards whole foods? So example, Instead of, you know, I don't know if any of you eat Doritos, but maybe like goldfish or crackers or, um, you know, snack foods like that that are highly processed with lots of ingredients um, and bad ingredients, you know, too. Um, I would love for you to have a handful of nuts or some olives or, you know, things like that. So higher quality food. Cooking from scratch and cooking at home from whole food is always going to ensure that you are eating the, the highest quality, okay? And then whether it's organic or grass-fed or all of that, um, you know, that's another story. It just adds another layer of high quality to it. Okay, so food quality, number one on my list of the seven things that matter when it comes to trying to lose weight. Your body knows the difference. It, by the way, digests these foods much easier. So it, it makes digestion faster and you don't keep as much on you um, in the form of fat. And while I'm thinking of it, this handout that I'm going to have for you, I know you can't really read it, but it's called Clean Eating Basics. 
this is one of them that you're going to be able to download tonight and um, Alternative Healthcare Center has will have copies of these as well. Um, this goes through all the labels that food should have. So look through this to see what I'm talking about and more specific examples of what would be in the grocery store for you. All right, number two, macronutrient balance. This one hands down, hands down, <laughs> is the most important thing that I would ask anybody to do trying to lose weight, okay? Everyone, and this is a popular term now, macros, right? Like everyone has heard about it, has heard talk about it, um, and it's really, it's not complicated. All the food that you eat, no matter what you choose, falls into one of three categories you see here on the screen, carbs, fat, and protein. Everything falls into those three major macronutrient categories. So um, the no matter what plan I put someone on, whether it's paleo or, you know, anything, if it's for weight loss or health in general, we always want low carb. Low carb does everything for us, okay? It brings down blood sugar. It brings down weight. It brings down inflammation, which makes you feel amazing, um, so we always want low carbon and, and for many, many, many reasons. These are all wonderful side effect benefits um, when you do it. You just have to try it. And you'll know what I'm talking about. So macronutrients, um, low carb. I'm giving you a number here. I'm saying 90 grams of carbs a day. Now, there is no one right perfect number. It really depends on you and who you are and so much more about you. But a very safe number to start with is 90 grams of carbs. And this is like if you've never played with carbs before. You'll feel it. You'll feel the pinch of low carbs when you go down to 90 grams. And we'll talk about counting and everything, okay? But, um, but that is what is really going to be magical, honestly. Okay. Um, and then sometimes you have to layer in some other things too, to help the weight loss going. It depends how much you have to lose, but um, cutting this down is awesome. Uh, it, when you cut carbs though, it doesn't mean that you, you cut fat and protein too. Otherwise then you're just on like a 500 calorie diet. We can't do that. That doesn't feel good. And it is not healthy. Um, so what you want to do is have normal amounts of protein. Doesn't mean this is a high protein diet, just adequate. Okay. And then higher healthy fat. Fat does not make us fat. Fat does not equal high cholesterol or increasing your risk for cardiovascular disease or heart attack or all the scary things that we think about. Um, it, if you're eating the right fats, which you can go back and watch my last presentation here on, um, on this uh, Facebook page, you'll see my fat conversation and then you'll feel a little bit better about that. So macros. What you're, well, let me tell you first what they are and I'll show you how I count them. So first, carbs, just in case you need a little refresher here. Um, oh, that's nice, Kathy. You're saying you make flaxseed crackers with apple cider vinegar. That sounds fun and yummy, like a little little kick to those crackers. Um, yum. That would, be, I, that would be interesting. I'd love to see a picture of that or try them. <laughs> um, okay, so carbs are going to come from grains, legumes, starchy vegetables, fruit, of course, anything sweet, right? Um, so carbohydrates, they're not, these aren't the demon, these aren't bad foods, but this is where they live. They live in these types of things. Okay. Um, so they're everywhere and, they, and they're also in nuts and seeds. I forgot to write that down there as well, but they're not very high in those food items. Okay. So next we have protein foods. Those are going to obviously be your animal products, anything from an animal, the dairy products from an animal, all fish products. And then for um, the vegetarian crowd or whatever, if, if you're not vegetarian, but you eat it, tofu, tempeh, um, and if you use protein powders, these are all proteins, um, fats, avocado, nuts, seeds, olives, um, it, nuts and seeds have carbs, fat, and protein in them, so they're a little bit of a blend, um, butter, um, or even like the lard or other animal fats, obviously those are all fats. So this is just the quick and short of it. Now, if you download um, the one, the first handout, Clean Eating Basics, it will go through what the different, um, what do I have on here? Yep, I have fats and, all, you know, a better detailed list of what they are and what you should get. Um, same with protein and carbs. Okay, so the next thing about macronutrient balance, um, there's the second handout I have here, and it is called um, How to Use the Carb Manager app. 
And this is going to tell you my favorite app, because this is how I think if you guys are on Facebook, then I know you can download an app on your phone. Um, you can also do old fashioned uh, like calorie counting book and paper a journal, which is how I did it. Um, 12 years ago, which by the way, I've lost 75 pounds too. So I don't know how many of you are on here that know me, but um, that that is this is a very personal topic for me too. <laughs> and something I always am working at personally and with my patients. So, um, so I, I feel you. Uh, okay, so Carb Manager app is my new favorite one. I've been using it for a few years and it's free and it's got a million bells and whistles all for free in here. So I love it. Um, this handout will tell you what the logo looks like when you download it, um, how to sign up, how to get your macros all situated, how to figure out counting total carbs, not net carbs, um, and uh, to be on a low carb, high fat plan. Okay. And let's see what else does it say in here. Um, it tells you to track between 60 and 90 grams of total carbs. I'd start at 90. You know, there's no need to like go down to 60 unless you really have something else going on, but you can email me and ask me questions if you want. Um, anyway, so the Carb Manager app um, and how to track macros is on here. And this will help you understand what you're eating. Um, just start tracking foods, even if you don't have any intentions of doing this, because you'll learn a lot about your diet and what you're eating. Uh, we all think we do better than we do. I promise you, I, uh, I'm i very good at talking myself into, you know, a piece of cheesecake and that, oh, well, this is mostly fat and protein and, you know, and, mm, yeah. So, uh, you know, once you write things down, it's a huge dose of reality and really makes you feel like, oh, okay, I see where I've got to make this change. You know, I, I'm doing way worse than I thought I was. So, um consider checking that out. I know I went through it fast, but the handout really does have everything you need. Okay, we're moving on. That's two of my seven. Number three, this one's easy. It's hard. It's probably the hardest one, but it's the easiest slide to tell you about. If you are not mentally prepared to embark on a journey that is going to change your source of comfort, which I'm assuming for all of us, we all relate. It's food. I've met very few clients of mine who say, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not attached to food. Uh, I have very few people. So if you are not mentally ready to make the change that is required, which is going to be hard work in the beginning, um, and, and it's hard work in the middle and the end when you hit those plateaus, when you're at that last 10 pounds, it can be really hard, but if your mental state is right, you can do anything. So if you're not feeling like it's right tonight, wait, just wait till you're feeling like maybe a rock bottom. Those are moments I've often used to uh, pick myself back up. So um, mental state, I'm going to take a drink of water. It's like a workout. Like we got to do water breaks. Okay. Everybody drink your water. It's part of weight loss too. <laughs> Okay, number four, meal timing. This is a huge question I get. And honestly, oh, mentally ready. Joyce wants to know what tips do you have to get mentally ready? Um, honestly, I've used a rock bottom state, um, like after a vacation or after a holiday, like maybe when I've indulged and I use it to lift me up um, and I had my fun, but now I'm ready. Those have happened for me. Um, I've also read books or, or listened to podcasts or listened to audio books about the topic, or I find other podcasts or YouTube videos uh, where people are discussing their success stories. And it makes me feel like um, I want that. I can do that. I feel hopeful. When I first lost my 75 pounds, um, I was on... Um, I started the first half with Weight Watchers because I really needed to learn about accountability. And that was huge. Um, I just ate my healthy way, not, not what they were recommending. And, um, I loved the magazine. I loved seeing the successful people there. That was very motivating for me. So that can be helpful too. Um, if I think of more, I'll let you know. Okay. But those are some big ones for me. Okay. Um, oh, and then I was going to say, there's another handout, um, behavior change that you can get at the office or you can email me for, and I'm happy to give it to you, but that gives you some questions to look deep inside about why, why you want to change. What's the why. Okay. All right. Back to meal timing. 
This is a popular question. Yes, it makes a difference. Um, in the beginning, though, if you just start counting macros, that's enough. You don't need to do really anything else. But slowly, as you feel comfortable, then you layer in the different um, uh, topics that I'm talking about. Okay, but meal timing is a really great one. And there's multiple options. There's no right answer here. There's some wrong answers. Um, but there's multiple right ones, I should say. So I feel like this font is very small. All right, three, me you know what, it's getting dark outside. Let me, let me see if I can give myself some light here. Okay, um, three meals a day with one to two snacks. Now that may seem like a lot of food, but it could be less food if you're someone who overeats. So even just starting with this could be fine. Okay, but never over the 90 grams of carbs. Three meals a day with no snacks. That is way harder than I thought it could ever be. Um, I find a lot of comfort in eating, even if it's within my macros and all that. Um, I don't like being hungry. That was something I really had to come to terms with. Try it. Stop eating after dinner. That is huge. And, and it, it's in part because of this whole intermittent fasting. You're, you're uh, probably unconsciously, if you don't know about intermittent fasting, it's, it's contributing to some of that. So um, not going to bed full is actually very important and very useful um, for people trying to lose weight. Breakfast. This is a huge thing because for years we had it drilled into us that you had to eat breakfast, but really you don't have to eat breakfast. And it's very convenient for intermittent fasting um, to use that window also. But if you don't eat breakfast, the deal is you have to eat adequate and healthy at lunch and dinner. Okay. Um, a lot of diabetics I um, work with, especially in the hospital when they're first diagnosed, they skip breakfast and they often skip lunch and then they binge eat like crazy later in the day. That is where you get into trouble. Okay. Um, if you, if you fast through any meals, you have to make sure that you catch up at some part of the day and do it in a healthy way. Um, intermittent fasting. Now this is another huge topic and I think I'm going to talk about it privately um, on my, um, Oh, hey, Dr. Jantz. Yes, I did define macros a few uh, slides back. I know you're trying to get on here and you might have missed it, but um, it was a few slides back uh, where I went through what they were. All right, I'm going to keep going. Um, so intermittent fasting, another big topic, but in general, here are a few ways that you could do it. You can fast for 16 hours and you can eat in an eight hour window. These are just numbers I'm throwing out there, but you want to fast minimally 13 hours. Studies show the best benefits come from at least a 13 hour fast and you get to include your sleep time in there, which is amazing because you don't know what's happening when you're sleeping, right? You don't know you're hungry. So, um, so that is awesome. And then if you want to keep going and skip breakfast, you can add to the fast window um, and make your next meal a late breakfast or an early lunch. So that's up to you. So here's an example I put. Eat breakfast at 10 a.m., okay? Um, you don't have to, but I'm just saying. You can eat breakfast at 10 a.m., you can eat lunch at 1 p.m., and then you can have dinner at 6, okay? Then you're going to fast from 6 p.m. until 10 a.m. the next day, and that's going to give you a 16-hour window. So not that hard, but when you're eating low-carb and eating clean, you might feel the little twinge of hunger every now and then. But when you're trying to lose weight, these are the things we got to do. You can always fast for more hours and you can fast for less hours. Um, this is up to you. And if you don't feel good doing it, just don't do it. Um, this is something to play with. I would consider it an advanced move for um, healthy eaters or weight loss losers. No, <laughs> weight losers, people who want to lose weight. Okay, um, for breakfast, good news here, you can still have coffee or tea. You can put some heavy cream in it because it's so high in fat and so low in protein and carbs, like almost none, that it does not get you out of ketosis. It does not stop your fast. It just gives you fat because fat does not break a fast. So you can have that and still get your coffee, get your tea in, feel um, you know full a little bit from that too, which really helps me. I couldn't fast without it. I am a hungry person in the morning. So um, you can do that and you can throw in a splash of MCT oil um, with your um, coffee too. And that will even help you fast a little longer and make a few more ketones. Um, there's this awesome website. You can look at this link here. Um, Dr. Becky um, did an experiment on herself and she shows you her ketones and um, her blood ketone levels and her uh, blood glucose levels by fasting, adding cream, 
the heavy cream and MCT oil and all of that and shows that it doesn't break the fast. I thought that was really fun to read that. All right, next one. I forget what number we're on. Five, four, <laughs> identifying food intolerances. This could be important. This might be something you do later in the plan. Like when you're losing weight, say you lose 20, 30 pounds, even just from cutting the carbs. I'm telling you people, it's, it's a great thing to start with. Um, then you might hit a stall and you might not be sh sure why. Um, checking for food intolerances is a great thing to do. So um, I think the easiest way to do it is to actually just go see someone at one of the docs at um, Alternative Healthcare Center because they can muscle test you and you can find out pretty quickly what is the problem, um, you know, what you're deficient in because even some of these blood tests um, there are better ones like micronutrient blood tests by SpectraCell. Um, that's a great one because it goes into the cellular level of your micronutrient supply. Or I'm sorry, I'm skipping topics. I'm talking about food intolerances. But but especially, I'm sorry about that. Um, if you go to uh, get a food intolerance test, same story though. They're not always accurate. Um, it you know, it just could be wrong or it could tell you too much is wrong. And then people panic about that because the list of foods is too long that you have to avoid. So getting muscle tested for foods that agree with you or don't agree with you are super important. Um, I'm skipping over what I'm talking about. Or we can do a good old fashioned elimination diet, which can be extremely revealing and is my favorite option because that's the best test is just to try it, right? Um, I do both. I often go through elimination diets of different sorts, like paleo is an elimination diet. There's a traditional one. I get muscle tested. I, I do everything because I want to I want to know everything. <laughs> um, OK, so there's food intolerances and there's food allergies. So an intolerance would be to dairy typically um, or, you know, like you don't feel good when you eat. Um, any citrus, you know, those are typically not an allergy. It's more of an intolerance. So your immune system is not really involved with that reaction. But uh, food allergy is um, an immediate immune response. That would be something you'd feel right away, like a peanut allergy as the most common basic example, right? Um, those people usually know what's going on. But some I've had some patients come in not knowing that they were slightly allergic to eggs. Um, and so we cut them out and it, it was a deal breaker for them. Like it helped them continue losing weight or, you know, achieve other health goals. So um, this could be something for you to think about if you've been stuck with weight loss. Um, ha you know, keeping, uh, continuing to eat foods that are, you know, causing, I guess if you're intolerant or allergic, they're going to create inflammation and that is going to, you know, just be a, a sucker for you. Um, okay. So next one the gut microbiome. This is another huge topic. And I think most people know about the gut microbiome, right? Like everybody seems to have heard of it at least. Um, you know what? We're still investigating this. Like there's definitely no, um, there's some solid information and data that we have, but it is definitely a work in progress. So, um, you know, all I, all I tell people is if you eat healthy, if you eat a lower carb diet, you're definitely positively influencing your gut microbiome. You're feeding the good guys, you're starving out the bad guys. But sometimes you have to go even farther than that um, to kill some deep rooted buggers that have taken hold. And it can be any pathogen, right? It can be parasite, bacteria, virus, or um, yeast. You know, these are things that just hang on and and they go everywhere, really. So this is another great um, reason to get muscle tested because you can get down to the nitty gritty. Some of the stool kits, you know, they're only going to check what you poop out. They can't check what's living inside you and doesn't get wrapped up in the poop. OK, so um, so it's frustrating for people because you can have a poop test and it will totally come out um, you know, normal and you know you're not normal. You're not feeling OK. So. Um, you know, taking a daily probiotic, cleaning up the quality of your diet. These are all very important things. So I'm having trouble hitting these buttons now. Um, all right. So having a health, we know what the research says, though, that having a healthy, balanced flora helps maintain weight. And people who are obese tend to have more of um, a certain bacteria flora that 
is associated with obesity. And thin people have one. Um, so the, the one that makes us obese is called Firmicutes. And the one that um, is associated with thinness is Bacterioidetes. If, these are, if this is how you pronounce it, I read it all the time. I don't know what these letters are. Um, but anyway, so those um, are, are, have definitely been identified in different crowds of people. So unfortunately, there, you can't just take a bottle of it and, and get thin. <laughs> that was my first thought. And I immediately looked that up and that is not possible. So how frustrating. Um, all right. So I said that eating healthy helps balance this out naturally. Um, I'm going to turn on a light because I feel like we're getting, here we go. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. We were, we were, <laughs> we're getting into the nighttime hour here. Um, yeah. Oh, and don't over sanitize your life, which I know it's, it, it sounds kind of, you know, ironic to say that right now during the pandemic where you're supposed to sanitize, but there's a balance to this. Um, you know, the virus isn't everywhere. So don't feel like you have to sanitize everything, right? If you go in your garden and you're playing in the dirt, like that's a great place to be exposed to healthy bacteria. Don't, don't sanitize after that. There's no COVID there. Uh, if you're out in public and you're, you know, with other people who might have it, obviously sanitize then. But in general, what I'm trying to say is we do live an over um, sanitized life. And that is definitely ruining with the um, flora of our entire body. All right. Micronutrient deficiencies. This is what I was starting to say earlier at the wrong time. So again, you can get a blood test to tell you about what the micronutrients are, which are your vitamins, your minerals, your trace minerals in your cellular, um, what, like the cellular uh, content of these things. That's what makes the DNA replicate correctly and express correctly. That's what makes your cells work correctly. Um, if you're low in your B vitamins, you can't metabolize your macronutrients. And we want to metabolize our macronutrients because if we don't, we get gut problems and we gain weight. Um, you know, so all of the micronutrients, all the vitamins and minerals and trace minerals play a role in every human function that is critical to life, um, including weight loss, right? And helping us lose weight. So you know, our soil is depleted. There's not a lot we can do about that, like you and me, right? Like there's things that can be done. But um, so yes, we're all depleted. That's really the answer to that question, in case you're asking that. But a lot of people want to know, like, do I need to take anything? Um, maybe you can get a blood test, you can get muscle tested. I think that is the most effective to the point way to know exactly what's going on and then supplement. And of course, using top grade products, which Alternative Healthcare Center carries, um, and I use as well. Um, I said that all, all humans are probably deficient, animals too, actually. Um, so we, we need to supplement. It doesn't matter if you eat perfect. It doesn't matter if you eat all organic. You're probably going to need to supplement to some degree to be more nourished. And everyone has tendencies to be deficient in different um, micronutrients. So, you know, we can't know. We can't say everyone just needs a multivitamin. All right. So I said all those things. Um, I wanted to show this chart. SpectraCell um, is the company I was saying that does the micronutrient testing, but they have these really cool PDFs. This one is about weight management. Um, and so you can see all the way around weight management are the wheel of micronutrients that people tend to be deficient in when they are overweight or having trouble losing weight. So this, I am not saying go out and buy all of these, okay? I just want to say that. Don't go out and buy all of these and take them. You can reach upper limits, which would not be safe, okay? But it's food for thought, right? Like if you're frustrated, you're not able to lose weight, or you're at a stall, or you're not sure what's going on, um, you know, you can read through these. You can go back and look at these slides later. I can always send you a copy of this if you want one. Um, but it, it helps you understand that it's complicated, um, and a lot of things play a role, which is all the more reason to go get help from, uh, you know, one of the docs. I, you know, I'm not here to sell them, but I can't help it. They've been a part of my life this many years because that's what we do. My whole family goes and, um, you know, we get deficient no matter all, all the great things that we do and all the awesome supplements I have. Um, I still need guidance as well. So this is a huge part of how I stay healthy. All right, I go on a little bit more about them. So just so you know, micronutrients are your minerals. So that would be like calcium and magnesium and all of those. Trace minerals would be like zinc um, and silver and trace amounts of things that you need, but not a lot of. And then your vitamins, you know those, vitamin A, 
B, C, D, all of those. And actually, vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is, um, it is a hormone. Okay, um, they're everywhere. So all the more reason for eating a varied diet as much as possible. I know when you're on paleo or keto, you tend to lose out on some things, but that's why we're supposed to eat a varied diet. Um, vine ripened food is ideal. Locally grown food is ideal because they're going to be they're going to have gotten most of what they need from the soil to grow and ripen, and then that's when we eat them and get the best from it. Um, all right, I said that already. And if you're feeling deficient, you, you, you're already probably deep into this deficiency, by the way. Um, if you like magnesium, that's one that I think, gosh, probably everybody could take. Um, if you are having muscle cramps, if you are having tension, if you are having trouble sleeping or like eye twitches all the time, um, if you are constipated, um, if you have heart palpitations, all of these things are magnesium deficiency because magnesium relaxes muscle, right? And calcium contracts, but you need the magnesium to relax everything. Otherwise, all those things are going to go wrong that I mentioned. So most of us are pretty depleted in magnesium and feel way better when we take it. That's a mineral. That's what I'm talking about. So when you're already having those symptoms, you're already kind of pretty depleted. You might need a bit to replenish, you know, and you shouldn't have to take it forever though. All right. What are we going to do with all this information? I, I talked fast. I went about 35 minutes and I gave you a lot of good stuff in that time. And it might feel overwhelming. I know because this took me, you know, 20 years to learn and I'm trying to spit it all out at you at once. So it, it, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. I want you to just go back and do one thing at a time. Look at the handouts. These really summarize what I'm talking about today. Okay. Some of this other stuff was details that um, you can talk to me or Dr. Jance about privately um, to see where you fit, like how that fits into your profile. But um, but we need to just start small and, and stay cool. So don't panic, number one, okay? Um, just start with food quality and macro balance. And I'm assuming most of you, if you're here, you're already doing food quality and you probably know about macro balance, but maybe you haven't had specific numbers or understood tracking yet. So those are important and we just have to do that if we want to have results. Um, download the handouts and that will that will have it written for you so you don't have to try and remember everything I said, okay? Um, over time, try the other things, okay? The meal timing, that might be fun over time um, to see how that works for you. And of course, all the, the micronutrients and the gut microbiome, those are things I would go to a doctor for. Um, oh yeah, writing down your goals. Um, this goes back to the mental state thing, but um, you know, our brain is like a GPS, right? Like if, if you get in your car and you want to drive to, I don't know where you live, but I'm in Michigan. So if I wanted to drive to LA in California, I don't know how to get there. I need my GPS. So I turn it on. If I started driving without the GPS, I would probably never get there because even though I have good direction, I mean, that's far. I don't know where I'm going. So I feel like our intentions do the same thing for us. If you don't have a goal in mind um, and you don't have a plan written out or thought very well out, but I like writing better, your, your life just goes without direction, right? You're not in control anymore. It's just happening to you. So I'm saying take control by figuring out what do you want and how do you plan to get there and what is the commitment you are going to make to yourself what is the motivation that you're going to think of when you're reaching for the thing and you're looking at it and you're like, I got to eat it. I got to eat it. I, I don't care about being healthy. What are you going to think about in that moment to stop yourself and do the right thing? So without those, you're not going to get very far. Willpower is like a rubber band. You stretch it and at some point it snaps you and it gets you. So I want you to remember that that's a huge part of this as well. Um, oh, I will put the goal sheet. See, I already made a plan too, and then I forgot. So I'll put that goal sheet in the comment section. Just give me a minute after this ends, and I will do that. I'm just checking to see if this is Dr. James texting me. Nope. Okay, and then um, commit to them every day. That's how I lost all that weight. It did not happen in 75 days. It wasn't like one day per pound. It was a long time, um, and you know the journey still continues, and it's work every single day. Um, and then, of course lean on the doctors at the practice 
lean on a dietitian. It can be me. It can be anybody who talks like this, right? Um, but we are here for you and we're here to help you. We've been through this, most of us. So, um, so let us help you. Okay. Um, oh yeah. My little encouragement sticker there. All right, so this is the last slide, but if you have questions, if you want an appointment with anybody, um, here's Alternative Healthcare Center's information. And if you're on Facebook, you probably already see you have access to it, but here it is written down. And then there's me next to it, okay? My business is Nutrition Uprising. Um, you can go to my website. You can email me directly. If you have questions about anything you heard tonight, I'm happy to help you. Um, but like I said, grab your handouts because that's going to give you um, a lot. And then um, I think one of them, now I can't remember what the third one is, is this meal building template. So have a look at that too. It gives you a good picture of what each meal should look like. So unfortunately, Dr. Jantz had trouble. I hope that um, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> I sent the link to try to get on here, but um, but there was just a difficulty and I, I didn't see him try to pop on. So we missed his um, wisdom about weight loss. I know that he was um, going to add a lot in here because he's worked a lot on this over um, the course of his entire practice. And um, he's all of the doctors there are so good at what they do and helping people. So, um, so anyway, maybe he'll add something at the end or in another little live about weight loss. But for tonight, you had me and I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you so much for watching and coming and I look forward. Um, oh, Dr. Jan says I'll come on in a few days and do some of the root causes of weight loss. I love that. I'm going to watch too. Um, and I'll be looking out for that. So have a good night, everybody. And I'll talk to you next time.